hi guys now that the crypto market starts to collapse maybe just maybe we will see that big correction that i've been preaching about for way too long um let's see uh, i did uh, change my investment plan right at the top uh, and i think that's a good thing because i think the best time to make buy-in plans is during the bubble and then stick to them um, because as things start to go down you're always going to set your targets lower and lower and lower and in the end you don't buy enough or not at all because you expect to go lower so uh, i'm very happy i did update it um the last time uh, at the uh, all-time high actually also a day later um but but i did um i did update it like yeah uh, this is incorrect may the all-time high was so that's actually the 26th of uh, june uh that we got the top of the uh, rebound i call that uh, because i think uh, this is what it will be just a rebound um the, those were the prices that were reached at the top tesla also had a top uh but that's another story um so i think that um so what I changed uh, uh, during the top formation was my expectations that we would see a new bottom. This used to be 60% and I lowered it to 40%. And the reason that I did that was that, well, uh, in order to get a new low, uh, a new bottom, well, I don't believe it's possible to have a bottom a little bit lower than 3,250 because every time you make a new bottom it's gonna be a lot deeper so i think when you make a new bottom you go lower than 3050 it's not going to be 2800 or 2500 that's just not likely it's much more likely it's going to be cut in two again uh, so from 3050 cut in two is about 1500 1600 eh? but of course uh, i think 2000 breaking 2000 is an important psychological barrier because the moment you break 2000 you're in thousand 900 range and and so i think that is possible to happen but how possible it would mean from the top that you need to make an 87 percent correction and that's the problem because we have not seen that in the past an 87 percent correction that's very very high it's with actually a new all-time high you never had such a strong correction so that's not likely to happen eh? and the strongest correction ever in crypto uh, to happen is not likely um but because we went so high in this parabolic run um to thirteen thousand seven hundred, yeah it becomes very difficult to reach uh thousand seven hundred uh, you do need an 87 percent correction and if you look uh, at the history um let's go through that this is a great chart from throwaway and here you can see all the all the all, all the historical corrections uh, and how much percent it was and uh, as you can see um it has never been higher than 87 percent the highest correction was 80 percent and that was during the bubble of 2013 we went from ten dollars to two hundred fifty-five dollars, and correct to fifty-five dollars in a flash crash. Uh, that was eighty percent. So it's very, and, and you can also see that it used to be bigger corrections than here. And like corrections, like volatility goes down over time. Uh, percentage increases go down over time compared to the first bull market. The percentage increase was a lot less the last bull market so 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 and corrections well have been less than here so it's just not likely to see an 87 percent correction anymore uh here it can happen but it's not likely but i do still give it 40 percent, which is still very high considering that would be like a, a, a new i the biggest correction ever for bitcoin but i did still give it 40 percent because 
because of the extraordinary circumstances that we're in, we never also never ever saw a rebound that was so strong. Uh, never ever. Like that was just crazy. Uh, so, so, um, but this is important because that really makes that actually it becomes much more important to buy on these because that's not likely anymore. But what is still likely is that we do hit um, a new high in undervaluation. We hit a 55% undervaluation, uh, no, 50% here the first time in December 2018 when we hit the low of 100 billion and the low of 3,050. There was an undervaluation on total low shares of 50%. And it is very likely that we will see an undervaluation that goes higher than that, even if the bull market has started. Mm -hmm. You can see in the link to the sheet, you can read all these comments with better uh, argumentations that I'm telling here why that's likely to happen. Uh, just uh, click the link uh, below in the YouTube description to this sheet. You can also copy the sheet and continue to work on it yourself. But um, that's actually very likely to happen. And that would mean that we go minus 55%, but that's only on, like it takes time. It could happen next week, but that's not likely. It takes time usually to get there. Uh, and so most likely it's only gonna be in one month from here and then the trend line uh, is already uh, today it's about 285 but it will be at 310 billion you deduct 55 percent and you get a new low uh, but it's not uh, sorry it's not a new uh, low it's just a testing of the low at 140 billion which would mean we reach like for bitcoin 4400 but for bitcoin cash 200 and for ethereum 140. i think that's still very likely to happen and a great point to buy in because from there it could go back up. Uh, I mean, it does, it does like the pattern. Um, uh, so, 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 if we hit here a low of 55%, then we are in line with what's happened in previous bear markets that uh, we make higher lows in undervaluation compared to the trend line. Uh, that has been always the case in past bear markets. Even when you found the bottom, here was the bottom in 2014, 15, January 2015. Uh, here was the bottom in 2011. Uh, that's this bottom. Uh, and then you have also this bottom. Like, But even when you hit a bottom, fiat bottom, you still make new highs in undervaluation. Uh, 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 and, and, and so that's just very likely to happen. But that does not mean a new high in, uh, sorry, a new low in bottom in fiat, no. But, uh, but it does mean that you go further from the trend line. Huh? And that, that's to be expected, that the distance between the trend line and this point goes up. But because the trend line also goes up in the meantime, it doesn't mean a new fiat low, but it means like you would drop to here somewhere. Huh? Here, a little bit higher than here in fiat but a little bit lower compared to the trend line, just a little. Huh? That's 55% undervaluation, a higher undervaluation. That's to be expected, just like here, the trend line. Yes, you make the fiat low here, but actually here, you end up being further from the trend line than here. And then actually make another, right before the parabolic bull, uh, the parabolic uh, uh, takeoff, actually the distance is the highest. Huh? So after the sideways movement, that always here is this very steep sideways movement, but here the sideways movement is actually uh, much less steep. But actually at the end of the sideways movement, the undervaluation is the highest. You see here, 2011, at the end of the sideways movement, the undervaluation is the highest. And here too. So that's why I think that it's still very, very likely, even if we saw the bottom here, that we will see creeping I, that we see undervaluation going up over time. And so that means we were at, actually it was minus 50%. It says here minus 47, but anyway, that it will be higher than that. Made my, so I take minus 55% that, that will fulfill it. This is not up to date. The, the overvaluation to, went to plus 30% about, but now we're correcting. Um, so, so I think it's very likely to happen even if the bull market has happened. And so I think this price point is very, very good to to load the boat, huh? but not before. Why not? Well, it depends on your exposure, of course. But if you have a, an OK exposure today, yeah, then I think this is really a good to load the boat and not before, because it's likely to happen. 
so that's my plan uh, and then I also give still a 60% chance to uh, test the bottom for real uh, because this is not testing the bottom I mean it's a lot higher than 3050 uh. testing the bottom is that you actually come close to it in previous bull markets that meant um, um, always closer and closer uh. Uh, if you look at this chart um, for example, for Bitcoin, testing the bottom in 2011 meant that, uh, yeah, you go from $32 to $3 and then you go to like $10 and then you correct uh, to $8. $8 is testing the bottom, but it's a lot higher than $3 here. Eh? It's a uh, triple. Um, but in, in, the, in the next bear market, testing the bottom was really testing the bottom because the low was under $55 and then you went to like... $350, but then you went back to $200. So $155 versus $200 means 30% higher was testing the bottom. That's not 200% higher. It's only 30% higher. So that's why I think actually it's still likely we're going to test the bottom. That means not break it, but like come close to that fiat value of $3,250. But I don't think since it's going down so quickly because of the trend line going down so quickly in growth, it means that if this was three uh, 200% testing the bottom, and this was 30% testing the bottom. That means here it will be 10% uh, higher testing the bottom huh? only. Huh? And that means like, yes, you go in the 3000 uh, range, you go to 3500 or so. That's testing the bottom. I think we still have a 60% chance for that. Not 80 as before or 70 as before 60. Huh? It's not so high anymore. Everything had to go down. I, I was giving this a 90% probability, but since this has gone down from 60 to 40 this also has to go down from 90 to 80. but i think you should certainly save cash for this because while you still have a majority chance to hit to, to, to see that happening so you certainly it's a good idea to try to buy there and have cash on the side to do that huh? and for me this has stayed the same i'm willing to risk like in the previous bear market of crypto i went to 80 percent exposure and it's the same today i didn't raise this or lower this i still want to have try to have 80 percent exposure during this bear market um and that means my target uh is like uh, i want to have like a majority exposure uh, when we reach serious undervaluation and for me that means serious undervaluation is minus 35 percent we reach that um and then i want to have 51 percent exposure we were long past there we, we saw minus 50 percent exposure so i should have been exposed 60 percent at the bottom that we saw in my case i didn't fully did that i was 50 percent only because i went actually to 80 percent exposure here instead of 51 and then i went down to 50 percent exposure here and i didn't increase it so these are mistakes i made i over invested here I underinvested here, and then when we went back up, uh, I sold half, and I was again underexposed. I regret that I made that mistake of selling of coins that I bought um, once serious undervaluation has hit. I think that was a mistake of me, and so I will certainly not do that again in the future. Uh, but um, so the plan is now to uh, yeah to buy this. Uh, with these uh, target allocations to go to right now my exposure is 44 percent crypto well, at these valuations let's say my capital is hundred thousand uh, dollars um uh, well in that case um right now i have fifty six thousand in tesla and forty four thousand in crypto but if indeed we get such a correction then this 44 will go to 28 a thousand and that means i have a 37 percent correction and i will then raise it to 64 uh, percent and so that means that in my case actually i really considering buying ethereum also and not just bitcoin cash i think it was a very good idea so in my case i would just uh, buy um um ethereum and um and raise my status of ethereum and then in the future uh maybe i'll buy some more bitcoin cash if we if we reach these prices And if we reach these prices, something else that's changed also um, in this is that you can see that even if we make a new bottom, I think actually the odds are 
that we won't make it for uh, for Ethereum and Bitcoin Cash. This has changed also. Um, and why? The reason why is that in previous bear market, um, you can see that actually dominance of Bitcoin did not continue to go up till the end. Huh? Uh, this is the bear market of 2014. And, and you can see that dominance of Bitcoin collapses before the bear market is finished from 95% to 80%. And you can see here, here is the bottom. Huh? So it starts here. When total market cap goes from about 10 billion here, 9 billion to about 5 billion. Huh? In that time, at the same time, dominance of Bitcoin collapses. Why is that? Well, you can see here why Ripple explodes in value during the bear market, it has a pump and others yeah you can see others also gain here that's the first phase others not ripple but other cryptos gain and I, I did some research on that indeed it was a dash or monero one of them also is pumping um but yeah i also checked nxt like yeah some are are, are are going up here but on different times but that's strange because Actually, the bear market continues here. You have a, a little rebound here when Bitcoin goes from $450 the low to, sorry, $400 the low to $650 the high. That's a little rebound here, but it took four months from here to here. Um, but at the same time, during this rebound, the last phase, alts go up some because you can see dominance is going down here. No, sorry, uh, while, while Bitcoin is correcting in value uh, from 600 to high 650 to a low year of 155, um, it's also losing a lot of dollars because some coins actually go up in fiat value during this bear market. Um, and Ripple, of course, the most, but some others too. So, so I think we will most likely see a similar scenario during this bear market that uh, if indeed we make a new low, which means the bear market is not finished, and um, that uh, <laughs> that dominance of Bitcoin has reached the peak already today. Uh, it was 62% at the top of the rebound. And uh, I think if this bear market continues and we make a new low, we will also see at the same time dominance collapsing. Uh, and, and so I did the simulation it, it, there is always going some off here, 5% uh, off, 5% off, I mean 10%, uh, but you go to 50% dominance and here at the bottom of the bear market, it's only 44% dominance. I think that's realistic, it could, could be lower, uh, but but the, the point is, this is the trend. And so where does, what does happen with the other coins, Bitcoin, Cash, Ethereum? Well, there's a chance, well, if Bitcoin loses dominance, some other gain dominance. Huh? And so this is what I did in the simulation. Even though the bear market continues and Bitcoin makes a new low, these, and I could of course be wrong, I mean, some coins will go down actually in market share, others go up. Uh, but on average, alts, altcoins, alt alternative coins other than Bitcoin BTC will go up in dominance during, even if the bear market continues. Huh? Uh, and, and so they will lose less value than Bitcoin. And so here I just did whatever Bitcoin loses in percentage, these others gain. But that means that for, for Bitcoin Cash, it goes up uh, from currently about 2.3% market share to 2.8% goes up a little. Uh, Ethereum goes up a little. Uh, this is just divided over all altcoins go up as much as Bitcoin loses. So there's no preferential treatment here uh, and, and it's not realistic actually because the chances that Bitcoin Cash or Ethereum go up in market share is much higher than many other uh, cryptos. Uh, so, so it's an underestimation, but it does show that even with an underestimation, they are not going to make a new blow.
And I think actually, I've said this many times, that's actually probable. Even if Bitcoin makes a new low, they won't. Because, well, actually, for example, volume was very high for these coins when the bottom was formed for Bitcoin Cash of $80. Not at the bottom, but on the rebound, it was extremely high. It was a very, very strong rebound. Went from $80 basically to $300. Eh? Or no, to $200 very quickly to $300. Like a massive rebound, if you remember. So I, I think that just market becomes smarter over time. Eh? And like... Projects that are undervalued become more valued over time. That's also happening during bear markets, not only during bull markets, also during bear markets. I think these these projects will actually not make a new low, even if Bitcoin makes a new low. I mean, yeah, historically, that's been also the case. It's quite surprising. Nobody knows that. But you study the charts, you see that. Like I'm really surprised to discover that I didn't know that. I thought that during a bear market, Bitcoin dominance only goes up, but that's not true. Actually, it was at the peak in the middle of the bear market, and then it lost a lot. So this is not complete. Actually, what happened here is that Bitcoin dominance went up to over 60% here. Uh, this is not complete, uh, but we're right now right here, and yeah, it can uh, can go down. So um, that's it. I think this is very interesting. I hope it helps you. In setting your buy orders, I think it's if we indeed get a big correction. I think what's what's what may happen now is that um, is that 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 we don't get a big correction, but that it goes sideways. Even though we went to 10k already, it may like go start sideways. Bitcoin, and in the meantime, some alts may pump a lot. I think that's still possible, but equally as possible that we do start the market crash. But some coins just get their coins like it takes many many months. And in the meantime, some coins actually pump hard. Uh, I think that's possible. Um, so yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, anything else I can say? Let me see. Mm. Yeah, so, so, so in my case, that would mean that, um, yeah, I'm invested not in cash, but in Tesla, but that I will build down my Tesla position exchange for whatever coin I want to buy right now. That's Ethereum. Uh, I, I do think that's a good moving. I really believe Tesla is a great investment. And But as you can see here, the potential, upwards potential, is much higher for coins like Ethereum and Bitcoin Cash than, than Tesla. Huh? I mean, and we're talking over the next four years here, not the next 10 years. Huh? By 2023, when the next uh, bubble is to be expected, to uh, pop, huh? uh, it, it, it will go quick, and and so it's very it's not possible for a company like Tesla to go up so much. Uh, the, the the big revolution of Tesla is, is amazing and is a revolution on sake, but crypto is a much bigger story even than Tesla because well private currencies that was never allowed. It's like communism falling and suddenly private companies are allowed. That's, that's of course, tremendous. A bug, much, much, much bigger story than certain companies revolutionizing certain industries. A much bigger company is that you actually get a free market in currency. So that also explains why coins can go to a valuation here in the next bubble of two, three, four trillion. Uh, that these are tremendous valuations, only a couple of years. Uh, I think um, Tesla can also reach something like that, but that does mean that actually it multiplies much less because Tesla today is worth 40 billion, whereas, well, Bitcoin Cash will be only worth is is is, is today I think too high, eight, uh, six, seven billion. But if we see this correction it goes to three billion, two billion. Yeah, that means that it does do a hundred or two hundred fold. Huh? So, so in that in that case, if you do indeed get such corrections, I think it makes financial sense to switch Tesla for um, for uh, Ethereum or Bitcoin Cash, but um, um, and hopefully in the meantime Tesla goes up while crypto, uh, crypto goes down. That would of course be perfect for me. Fingers crossed. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.